And welcome back to another episode of Starfleet Command, where I'm Press Plus One. I'm Fleet Admiral Tarek of the Battle Cruiser Jesus Protector as we continue our campaign against the Klingon Star Empire. And we have, well, blasted our way through quite a bit of it, but I fear that this may actually be a planet up here, which is a bit of a problem. Because if the Klingons maintain a planet up top, then it, well, makes Quanos a little bit more at risk. So we're going to go ahead up top today and see if we can't annihilate that before it becomes a problem. But along the way, we're going to go blow up a monster. I don't know what kind of monster, but hopefully it'll be something interesting. Or Maybe it'll be the intergalactic dreadnought and we'll actually get totally destroyed. Red alert and prepare for attack. Overload all systems as we're going to hit this like a big old truck. And we do have to go fairly slow in order to make this happen. We do have run into an Andromedan heavy cruiser. So this is a bit of a danger. Uh, however, we did bring the GCS horn as well as the Thunderbolt. Uh, who will hopefully help out quite a bit. I think we've got him outgunned. I mean, if we get in over there, we're gonna basically annihilate him in more or less one shot. So, yeah. Uh, heavy Cruiser, completely helpless before us. I predict this to be so. Let's go check out to see how much power we have in the power budget. We're gonna steal most of that so we can get on our way just as fast as we can. We do, of course, want to get on top of him, dump a whole bunch of plasma on top of him, and just make him cry and hopefully explode into even more balls of plasma. You see, plasma in this game begets plasma. When you've defeated your enemy, they will just become even more of whatever it is you use to blow them apart. It's not strictly true unless you're playing as the Gorn or other plasma races. He does apparently have a couple of fighters currently zipping out along the way. Looks like he's already been shot at, but I do believe he probably had a wild weasel for that one. After all, he didn't take any damage from those plasma torpedoes. But we're about to enter the scene. And that means we don't even have to use our... Uh plasma anchor technique because we already did well actually no he already did the the decoy work boom we show up the fight is over that's exactly what one would expect from an advanced bombardment cruiser the most powerful vessel in the entire game maybe actually hmm at some point, I'm going to have to compare all the X-ships, and that's going to be interesting. The freaking video is actually on hold right now while we currently work on the mod for the next generation mod. But after the next generation mod is in a much more comfortable place, I will return to start working on the freaking video, and then possibly... Okay, good. Uh, I'll do the planetary assault. After, the, uh, after phase one is mostly complete, or at least I get a good handle on I can start working on the frigate video again and sort of testing things out and making sure everything makes sense to me and then after that we'll probably move into X ships or maybe we'll go destroyers not sure the early era is such an easy thing to make videos out of because it's so limited in the number of ships that there are so you can actually you know pull off making things all right so we are currently squaring uh escorted by the USS Fokker who is a CVS as well as the USS Richards which uh, is a heavy war destroyer and squaring off against us is an XCB, a PL-11, and an XCF. Yeah, we gotta kill this XCB. It is the Lirans who got involved in this one. Okay. Never mind. Maybe I don't have to engage the XCB first. Because the XCB just has like 14 disruptors. It's not that big of a deal. So maybe if I engage the XCF first, that might be the better pick. Ooh, but the XCF doesn't have plasma lance. Or not plasma lance. A ESG lance, which is quite the interesting and powerful piece of equipment. One of you needs to die, and I'm not sure which one. And if I fire at one, then it completely... Die, please! Oh, crap, I know. I did it wrong. I am the dumb. That's not good. That is very not good on so many levels. Because now we have just fired our plasma torpedoes. We got three turns until they're ready again. Oh, that was, that was such a terrible, terrible move on our part. So the CVS is going to have to kind of pick up our slack because we screwed up badly. I'm not afraid to admit that. I've just placed us in a very untenable position. Because I am the big swinging stick in this combat at the moment. I have the most powerful weapon available to me. And he is able to completely just blitzing through all my shields. This has not gone as well as I intended. Alright, well, uh, we'll start making distance away from the enemy as we prepare our plasma torpedoes once again. As long as that heavy bombardment cruiser doesn't get too heavily into us. Okay, so the phaser's blasting away, and what are you actually? Are you hawks? They are hawk ones, but I thought I saw gatling phaser. Oh, that, mu that must have come from the XCF, of course. Uh, we are uh, halfway charged, but we cannot, cannot really get involved until 
We're fully charged. It's what our primary weapons are set up to do. And we do get our forward shields back in a position, so that'll be good. I'm going to pull the shield defense away from just that super weak aft shield and put it back into where it belongs, protecting the front of the ship. How much power do I got? Uh, steel. How much power do I have? I'm not entirely sure. It's showing four points. Okay, there it goes. Oh, because I'm not asking for more power. Jeez. Uh, I want to focus on this XCB. He has more disruption. But you have more phasers, which is terrifying in several levels. And languages, I suppose. Uh, let's come over here and set up our tractor anchor. We want to make sure this doesn't happen again. So we're going to do it right this time. We're going to do a full proper plasma anchor. Even though we've got incoming, that's going to hurt a lot. But you know what? We'll reduce all the way down to zero speed. Grab him. And that holds him outside of range. Alright, so we've managed to hurt him quite badly. Uh, I've got to hold on to him for a little while longer. Because that's, that's that's a terrifying thing of death and destruction. Never mind, he hit me anyway. More power. We are outnumbered. That is a definite concern at the moment. Keep shooting all the weapons and plasma weapons to normal. Give me additional power. Uh, Marines, hi. Uh, I may need you to bail me out. Absolutely send in the Marines. Just need a little bit more fire and I've got them. So just give me one more transport over of Marines and we'll have you completely in my control. Four phasers, that'll do it too. If I hit him enough times, I might be able to kill more, more of his people. Alright, so my point defense plasma torpedoes are finally getting involved and really laying into him quite nicely. So he's down to a single pseudo frigate and we have a lot of repairs to get done, don't we? Yeah, we're at 53 power. That's a bit of a problem. So as we circle around, prepare the marines. Okay, we have made sure we will now capture that XCB. Guaranteed. And it is a PL-11, which means we're not actually going to have to worry too much about fighting the planet itself. The planet will be mostly weak and easy to destroy. We're going to go slow so that we can actually defend ourselves properly. Repair all of the phasers that we've already damaged. How much power do I have in the forward shield? 19 is not enough. I need more. I'm going to slow even more. And you know what? I'm even going to start kicking on the electronic countermeasure. I'm going to go up to a sick... Uh, we'll go four and two. Sort of take him under control. Is my forward shield down? It is. Holy crap. He just cut right through all of it. Uh, plasma torpedoes. Fire the pseudos. Hi, buddy. How are you going to respond? Exactly how I had hoped you would. Phasers? Uh, phasers, please. Fire. Please take it out. Do I not have anything left? I don't have anything left. Uh, okay, so that's a bit of a problem. My plasma torpedoes are in normal mode, aren't they? Yeah, so they're going to bore right through him, but they're not going to kill him. Uh, once he hits at proper speed, we will know. When to fire, which is now. Start to turn, start to turn, start to turn. He's going to have a bad day, but I don't know if it's going to be enough of a bad day. 203 damage, really? Oh, the amount of damage we deal when we really want to is quite impressive. He is able to pick up on those missiles, but I don't think that's going to save him. I think, I think maybe I've got him. I think maybe we have this under control. Not as much as I would hope, but we're working on that. So I really need to get around. He's doing a speed of zero, which kind of tells me he's got no power. Are you mine yet? You are lovely. How about you? Can you become mine in relatively short order? Marines, you can. Special or no special weapons or phasers only. Come on, I need one more good shot just to reduce you down. Okay, send to the Marines. Don't, please don't kill him. It's going to take my Marines a little while to secure this. And deactivate the no special weapons rule. Or no heavy weapons rule. Target the planet. If I can capture both of these, that would be ideal. But I don't think he's going to let me. I'm really kind of hoping he doesn't blow him up. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. He's mine. He has a ton of health, but uh, it's possible that he may not survive. Come on. I want this XCF as well. I want to capture all of the enemy. It'll be such a huge prize. Don't you dare kill him. Now that I've cleared out pretty much everybody. Come on. Three, two, one. Update. Update. Come on. Capture the bloody ship. Seriously? There we go, okay. Yes, it was worth it. It was absolutely worth doing that. I wanted that 
I wanted that ship so badly. Also, this is going to resecure our northern flank because we'll have this. And then we'll take the tile next to it. Then we're going to be doing a little bit of housekeeping today. Plasma torpedoes to enveloping just for the additional firepower. And let's get these repairs underway because, oh boy, did we leave quite a few to get done. Uh, Marines, tractors, anti-plasma torpedoes, sure, why not? All right, our plasma torpedoes appear to be ready to rock and or roll. And how much power do I have? Uh, yeah, uh, I forgot about the electronic countermeasure. ECM, just go maximum electronic counter countermeasure. That'll be just fine. We'll get within range. Hopefully we'll bombard the planet in a way that it has never been bombarded before. They shall suffer for the damage they've dealt to my ship. To be fair, it was mostly my fault. Had we opened up that battle properly and just nailed him with all of the plasma torpedoes, he would have died very, very convincingly and quickly. Okay, we are now within proper plasma torpedo range. So engage. Also, I just realized throughout this entire fight, I don't know if my phases were overloaded. Start bombarding. Hey, yeah, he's down to two already. Can I send the? Oh, I'm not in range. Duh. Keep firing. Hey, it looks like the CVS has got in range. And send to the Marines. I'll stop. We'll have the planet in a jiffy. So we've captured... That's an interesting view. So we've captured not only the planet, but an XCB and an XCA. I am hoping that we get a lot large reward from this. Now, normally this will be worth 470, I believe, because I think 495 is reserved only for the homeworld assaults. But we have captured and the enemy has surrendered to us. One thing we might consider doing is just building a massive fleet of XCBs, but that might be a little bit ridiculous in the, what the game will end up throwing at us at that point because we will have literally unstoppable firepower. Wow, that is impressive in the amount of cash that could give. It's totally worthless to us because, well, the um, the money doesn't matter. We have 22,815. We can literally buy multiple Godzilla-class battleships with that. I think I can afford two of them. I might even do that. It has been requested that we use Godzilla in this campaign. I have been kind of not doing it because the Godzilla is fr fr frankly flat out inferior to this monster of a XCB. Really, this is the best ship in the entire Corn Fleet. Hands down. There is no exception to that rule. And I, I don't normally make rules without exceptions. But this thing is a monster. <laughs> It may be one of the best close or best single shot ships in the game. And I say that knowing that we have used a battleship carrier for the Hydrons to one shot enemy dreadnoughts. So yeah, this is a hell of a ship. And I am just incredibly happy to have it under our control. Because if we had to fight this thing, oh boy, that would be a painful day. Many painful days would be had at that point. So we are ready to rock and or roll. You're about to get within range unless he keeps running away, which, you know, is actually a pretty good idea. No, it looks like he's only decided he's going to do a little bit of a juke maneuver. So give me the 2.5, please. Thank you. We keep him just outside of our actual damage range and blow him into little tiny smithereens. Yep, we are capable of doing that all the way up to heavy cruisers. I believe we can do it to battle cruisers and we could destroy dreadnoughts in a full volley of the plasma torpedoes and all of the phasers. We are a nightmare to behold. If you want to fight us, make sure you stay at range. Good, we neutralized that tower, so we don't have to worry about it. We'll buy back over here. We'll get a bit of repair supplies. Hi. Patch up this. This will then give us access to all of this. So we can redo the spare parts, give us the additional mine, and go through all the marines that we used stealing all their stuff. Oh, eight more mine. There we go. Prestige is basically a non-issue at this point. We are the highest rank. We have the most amount of stuff. We are indomitable. But we are slowly getting through. Oh, we lost this? Really? Oh, good. We can take a patrol to just immediately get it back. I was worried I actually have to blow it apart. So let us ready up. And red alert. And just overload everything. That way it sets up the, uh, the phasers as well to properly prepare for full maximum combat. Blue shields all around. Completely invulnerable. Not quite. I mean, obviously, we have seen this ship can be destroyed under the right circumstances. And in fact, I believe it was last episode that we got annihilated, wasn't it? Uh, because we got mobbed, and we didn't quite realize how badly things were about to go for us. Now, granted, that is a very isolated incident 
Oh wait, you're a you're an XC something, aren't you? You're an XCB, a heavy bombardment cruiser. Okay, I can deal with that. We're gonna go power. I'm gonna go uh, this and this. Because at the end of the day, my electronic countermeasures are better than your electronic countermeasures, and I wonder if you know that. And let's see how he intends to deal with this. If he operates that ESG in the normal mode, it will not be helpful to him. If he operates the ESG in an extended mode, it would have been helpful to him. He did not. All phasers getting involved with that one. We can let him go now, please. Hi, did you enjoy that? I hope so. He has no more shuttle base, so we don't have to worry about actually getting on target with him anymore. Getting our Gatling phasers involved and just ripping into the rest of the ship, allowing our D-type plasma torpedoes to skirmish with his light vessels. Marines, hi. Um, weapons, half power. Marines, return fire. Stand to the Marines. Okay, that is a sufficient number to win. Oh, you hit me, you jerk. And here I am trying to politely and nicely steal you. All right, we're just gonna come in here and kill the pseudo frigates. Oh, phasers. Come on, come back here. Come back here. Um, could you... I just want to make sure he's dead before, you know, the ship gets captured, just in case. <laughs> just in case it breaks or something. Okay, so we took this one, uh, I was about to say reasonably intact, but then I saw we did 197 damage to it in the first attack, and then another 64 in the next. And that 197 may not actually be from the plasma torpedoes. Although it probably is. I mean, we only have 10 phaser X's, but theoretically they can do 15 damage each. Yeah, they can't do that. 420 prestige for robbing them blind, stealing the tile, and we're going to kind of see if we can't clear these out as well. Straight up convo rate, something reasonably easy to get done. At least one would hope. Can't guarantee that, actually, because things could go very badly. Defense condition one. Get ourselves up to speed as quickly as we can. Oh, we're being escorted today by the fort. HMS fort is equipped with two hellbores and three fusion cannons, as well as two Gatlings and five Phaser Xs. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it sure as heck ain't the best either. Got a freighter and a freighter. Uh, we'll get up there as soon as we can, which is going to be after a single turn passes, so we can really kick on the speed and just chase after them. There we go. We may now surge on forward at full power and speed. Uh, how fast can we actually get? I forget. It's been a bit. And let's go full forward shield reinforcement so that we defend ourselves from any other things that may come our way. Hey, we have a heavy cruiser who is our current defender, so we should be able to bore him out. And a Q ship. How cute. And we know he's a Q ship because he turned towards us. The normal vessels will just continue on their merry way. Already getting blasted by him. Okay, that's an interesting thing. Uh, one thing that I did forget totally and completely is I didn't prep this, which is a bit of a problem. I'm really tempted to crash stop because that may be the best solution to this problem as our forward shield has almost dropped to nothing. Hi. Bye bye Gone. So, the Q-ship is dead, as is his escort. So now we or not the Q-ship, the heavy cruiser's dead, as is his pseudo-frigates. Now we just need the Q-ship and to get on top of these guys off over here. So I'm just going to increase the speed and we're going to zip on over here. I have trust that the fort can handle this guy all on his own. Doesn't need us. We would just be in the way. After all, he's got fighters with Gatling phasers. Do we really? Or, uh, maybe not Gatling phasers. Do we really need to get involved? Answer to this question is no. No, we do not. Beautiful. All right. Uh, give me the convoy coordinates. We're going to start engaging. So fire pseudo. I don't think it'll actually reach, but I figure I may as well give it a shot. From a distance of 20. And prep is a Trek Tor Beam. And target you. Hi. Bye bye. Next target. Trek Tor Beam. Charge it up. This and this ought to be able to handle it. Hello. You're dead. On to the last one. Prep the tractor beam a final time. As we're going in for plasma torpedoes. Good. The convoy has been defeated. The heavy cruiser and the Q-ship all destroyed. We have made the area safe for us and ourselves and the rest of the Gorn peoples. There's one more tile that we would like to take in time. And if we can, that should basically kick the Klingons out of the entirety of the north. Yes, one more tile to go. And then we're back up to the full forward 
standard battle that we were, would otherwise undertake. Emperor Defense is uh, 15. That's good to see. Alright, uh, another MET-10 patrol. Hopefully something easy to just buzzsaw right through. Shouldn't be too much of a danger. Unless, you know, Dreadnoughts, Super Battleships. Which, for some reason, I don't think it actually sends against us. Which would be a mistake, in my opinion. I'm going to have to try and figure out to see if I can learn how it generates mission challenges. Because, really, this, this heavy bombardment cruiser should be fighting everything. Like, it is not just a heavy cruiser. This is full-on can-fight battleships level of ship. I firmly believe that. Hey, look, it's a Dreadnought. <laughs> uh, it is C9, though, so it's not a particularly dreadnought, big Dreadnought. We are, of course, being escorted today by HMS Ford once again, who is a little bit dented after his previous outing. Start the tractor beam. We'll have everything ready to rock and roll shortly, and I should be able to bull him right on over with the plasma, as you do when you're, you know, flying a heavy bombardment cruiser, the likes of which uh, all should be afraid of. A Federation Heavy Bombardment Cruiser um, might be able to beat this, actually. And the reason for that would be he's got aft-firing photon torpedoes, which he can just set to proximity mode and just continually run away. As long as the Federation ship would be able to stay outside of plasma torpedo range, which he can, uh, this ship would have a very difficult time getting through. And the Marek Heavy Bombardment Cruiser similarly would have an interesting time of things. Although I'm not sure if the Marek Heavy Bombardment Cruiser would be able to win against a human player because he would run out of ammunition eventually. Although it is somewhat limited in terms of how much it can actually defend itself against missiles. See, one pass through, we can just annihilate an entire C9 Dreadnought. That is the firepower of this thing. That is amazing. To be fair though, the Marak of Marmor Cruiser is also stunningly effective in the right circumstance, mainly against the AI. All right, so we have knocked them clean on out of here. Which is lovely. We have secured the northern end of the galaxy, and I think we've also grabbed this and this, so that's working. So the front line has been established. Quonos belongs to us. All that remains is the southern pocket of the Klingons, and it looks like the Federation and the Hydrons are starting to close in. But that's going to do it for today's episode. I've been Tarak. If you like what you've been seeing, hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to see a notification every time I send these videos, press that little bell icon. Leave a comment. Have a wonderful 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. It is your independence salute. And I will see you all in the next episode.